Welcome back. The debate is continuing. It's expanding tonight. I have uh, different positions being taken on the breaking news story, which is that as of now, here's the situation. The government says we are imposing 144. Now, we will debate the legal ramifications of 144 and what that implies. But on the other side, T. Manna says we will defy 144. Is this purely a legal matter? Or inevitably later, will it have political consequences? Can the government be believed when they say they have nothing to do with these decisions? It's purely some officer of the Delhi police who in splendid isolation is deciding how to tackle T. Manna. Tonight, as we extend the debate, I have pleasure of welcoming on this Independence Day Prashant Bhushan, Lokpal Bill, Joint Drafting Committee member, thank you very much. On the other side is Harish Salve, former Solicitor General, and also another top legal eagle with him, Aryaman Sundaram, Vinod Mehta, Editor-in-Chief of The Outlook. Chetan Bhagat, who has actually flown down there to be witness, and I am told Chetan to be a part of these protests. And Malika Sarabhai, who has been an active member of India Against Corruption since the beginning. She's joining us from Thiruvananthapuram tonight. Let me ask you, Malika, first, do you think the government can arrest Anna Hazare tomorrow? And in your view, if that happens, what will be the consequence? I think they probably will arrest the team. And the consequence is going to be that many, many more people will come to the roads. In your view, is that creating a situation of anarchy? As Arvind said, there is anarchy in the country anyway. Our parliamentarians have been running this country in a state of anarchy for many years. And I want to point out here that it's as though this whole corruption thing is at the UPA's door. But in fact, every single political party is equally um, to be blamed for the situation and is equally corrupt. So I don't think anybody can take a stand if they belong to one of the political parties today. Harish Salve, Malika Sarabhai's argument and also that of Mr. Kejriwal earlier seems to be don't accuse us of creating anarchy. The situation of anarchy already exists in other ways and you asked for it. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, Mr. Chidamram once described India as a functioning anarchy. So, <laughs> in India to say that somebody is creating anarchy is um, a bit of an overstatement. Secondly, much as I may disagree with uh, hunger strike and, and the way in which, according to me, this movement is trying to pressurize parliament, I completely disagree with the perception of the Delhi police and the government that this movement needs to be put down like this. There is a right to protest and if illegal conditions are put, protesting against those illegal conditions is itself a protest. And I think the government which, uh, whose credibility is pretty much doddering at the present will possibly give a good fillip to the movement against corruption by arresting Anna so that more and more people sit up and are concerned about which way this country is going. Having said that, I think we need a full debate on the measures which we need to combat corruption so that we are rid of this menace instead of obsessing about any one particular way in which it should be done. Can he be arrested? My question is to Prashant Bhushan. Are you, are you expecting to be at this time tomorrow in jail? <coughs> well, I can't say whether uh, I will be in jail tomorrow at this time or anybody else will be in jail. But what I can say with uh, almost certainty is that the Delhi police and this government will do everything to prevent this protest from taking place. Now, whether their action in trying to stop the protest will just intensify the ferocity of the protest, not just in Delhi, but in all parts of the country, is for the people to see. In my view, every attempt that is being made to stifle this protest, first by imposing all kinds of unreasonable conditions, that you can't bring more than, that you can't have more than 5,000 people, that you can't sit for more than two days, etc., and then and now by trying to impose section 144 
is all going to boomerang on the government. This is leading to rising public anger of the people. It may not lead to anarchy, but it will certainly lead to enormous, uh, uh, an enormous sense of anger among the people of this country. We have been saying again and again that wherever and whatever protests take place across the country must be totally peaceful and not disruptive of, uh, uh, of life in general and not uh, in any way causing any inconvenience to other people. But I think the time has come for the people of this country to rise up as one against this totally unfair ruling dispensation that is bent upon not only promoting corruption but crushing the democratic and fundamental rights of the people. Here's a question to the other lawyer on the panel. Aryaman Sundaram, tell me, I'm confused about 144. I'm confused about 144 because routinely it is politicians who break 144. I mean, every time Rahul Gandhi goes to UP, Mayawati imposes 144 wherever he goes. And Rahul Gandhi then defies 144. Politicians are right at the forefront when it comes to breaking 144 and it is their democratic right to do so. My question to you is, Ariman Sundaram, as a good lawyer, can you take an unarmed man who has not yet made a provocative comment unless you find calling a fight against corruption a provocative comment, can you, do you have the legal power to take such a person into arrest? He's not carrying a deadly weapon. He's not armed. He has not made a provocative comment. He's walking into an area. Can you take such a person under custody, legally speaking? Arnab, uh, <laughs> your question is very beautifully put. It simplifies the entire matter. What I find especially unique about this evening is that we are all uh, predicting that a law is going to be broken tomorrow. We are predicting what is going to be the effect of breaking the law. We are predicting what are going to be the consequences. And then we are trying to judge whether what is being done is right or wrong. Very simply put, I think you put your finger on it. It's all a matter of politics. Yeah. Politics is not a dirty word. It doesn't mean politics is what you do to win at the hustings alone. Politics is actually a way of getting the public to think the way you do, to try to uh, steer the political will of a country. And I believe that the present movement which Mr. Anna Hazare is seeking to start is also a political movement in its own way. As old as this country is, we have always used various forms of satyagraha, boycott, all these are unlawful means of protesting without violence. But let's not forget that there is a power to impose 144. As to whether it is imposed rightly or wrongly will depend on the facts of each case. But I cannot help thinking that we cannot say that the police or the state is totally unjustified. Look at it this way. There is a public place. There are going to be masses of people, 50,000, 100,000, whatever it is. But let's not forget that if there are 50,000 people there, there are 15 million people in Delhi. And whether we like it or not, one of the grounds of imposing a reasonable restriction on Article 19.1b, which is the right of assembly, right. is even if it causes a traffic problem. Okay. Now, the fact is, as to whether it's being rightly imposed, let me finish. Whether it's being rightly imposed in a given case or not is a different issue. But we are really talking about a public place right. where there's going to be a huge lot of people for an indefinite period of time, right. which could in itself cause a lot of other no, no, but when, no, no. And let's not forget Delhi has 15 million people. So the when, cause no, no. It may be very good. No, no, it may become a mass sir, national movement. Sir, then I, but then today I have a we are dealing no, no. with an express situation. Sir, but it's a democracy. You see, then, then the question is that the next time a political party holds a rally, no, no, no. you must have a person enumerating how no, many people I'm are sorry. being brought in. Because no, if 5,001 people sorry. come, you sorry. must immediately clamp sorry. down and stop sorry. that rally. I'm let getting responses. I'm getting responses me, from Vinod Mehta raised his hand. Vinod Mehta raised his hand. No, one minute. Let okay, me you want to you. Carry on. Yeah. If it's a political Arnab, party, Arnab, it is going to be a political meeting. Arnab. It's not an indefinite Arnab. period of time. Okay, fine. That is the issue. Okay, Vinod Mehta. Vinod Mehta. 
Arnab, I speak as a friend of Arvind Kejriwal, as a friend of Prashant Bhushan. I have shared platforms with them. I support their Lokpal bill. But I am very concerned in the last few weeks at the whole dangerous turn this campaign has taken and the vocabulary of protest worries me a great deal. I resent and I feel insulted when T. Manna says that Indian democracy is a sham, that Indian democracy, to dismiss Indian democracy as something which is a fraud, that Indian democracy crushes the Indian people. Team Anna is a creation of Indian democracy. Where would Team Anna be today without the creation of Indian democracy? Yes, we have a problem with corruption. We have a very serious problem with corruption. But I think to dismiss our robust and very vibrant democracy as the way they are doing is completely over the top. The pitch of this Absolutely campaign correct. is not just over the top, but is false. It's creating problems. We, we should lower the pitch. We should get back to dialogue, which is not full of ultimatums, which is not full of threats. We want to solve this problem, That's right. but I am afraid I am very disturbed and when T. Manna dismisses Indian democracy, because without Indian democracy, there would be no T. Manna. <coughs> Chetan Bhagat. I must agree no, with what uh, Chetan Mr. Bhagat. I want to get Chetan Bhagat, the youngest, the youngest participant on the panel tonight. Uh, Chetan Bhagat. Well, I mean, you know, all these points are very valid, but uh, I think it's now we are at the moment. And I think I did feel first that the second round won't be as successful. But I think Congress party has given two gifts to Anna's team in the last few weeks. One of them being the high handedness of the Delhi police. You know, as people don't like injustice, it's not just Indians, it's any society. They've done scientific tests. It's a very human need in a society to have a sense of justice. Now, when you th start to like strong tactics like the Delhi police and I, there is obviously it's the political pressure. I was at the Raj Ghat and I, I heard a police guy whispering saying, Sir, we have pressure on us, when will we get out of here? So, there is, def and the police is by the way with Anna, a lot of police people are with Anna. They are human beings, they want their kids to go to colleges and not face corruption. They are, they are with them. There is obviously pressure. but. This strong arm tactics has gifted Anna's movement, given it a second lease of life and it's in their favor. The second thing is that whole statement yesterday about Sir se in paon tak karab bhrashta chaar mein Anna hazare. I mean, what kind, you can say that there is an issue there, but to kind of stand th that kind of a smear over a, on a 75 year old, 70 something year old man who has no real power or anything and who's just simply meditating on Raj Ghat to come on strong on him. I mean, even people who are passive to the movement have suddenly woken up because this injustice was in corruption, this injustice is happening in, in using the Delhi police as your private security force and this is happening in and trying to smear Anna, which and these Congress party people find it so easy to smear anybody who's outside their party, but do they feel the same sarse paon tak Bhrashtachar when they see their own, uh, some of their scamsters. So, no, but this Chetan, has, I'm, I'm not commenting on no, no, who's Chetan, right or wrong. Chetan, here. Chetan, one minute, Chetan, Chetan, one minute. Chetan, one minute. Suddenly a huge tidal wave of sympathy I get your point, but Chetan, developed. listen now, to... if they arrest... Listen to the other point. If they point. arrest him, it will be the third gift. Okay. So, okay. that third gift, Arana. they can give it tomorrow morning. I, Anna today doesn't even need Delhi. People should realize, initially he needed Delhi. He can sit in a room somewhere and put a webcam and do his movement. And you guys will still cover it. So this Delhi police and trying to, these are all silly things. The, he can just move the movement out of Delhi. He can go to his own village where people can't touch him over there. So the government has to stop their arrogance. I agree with everybody. It's time to discuss. People should always discuss. But the government does not discuss. They send spokespersons okay. who are basically out come here and say okay. Saab ghar par nahi so, no, no, but because nobody in the Congress makes a decision no, no, unless it's the no, yeah, here's, big here's the argument. So they, no, no. they come and say the same I, thing, they I, don't discuss. I want to come back to Harish Salve who seemed to be agreeing with the point Vinod Mehta made that the pitch of this campaign 